Now, this Sunday, the world will finally get to see Oprah's highly anticipated interview with Harry and Meghan. And overnight, we get our first look at what we can expect. Well, it's all very dramatic, isn't it? To discuss that and the rest of today's biggest news stories, we're joined by Matthew Wright and Julia Hartley Brewer. So, what do you make of uh, what do you make of the promo? Oh, the, the, the promo is really interesting because it does the opposite of what Camilla Tumini was saying last week, which is she expected Meghan to be leading, and there you have Harry doing all the talking, and Meghan doesn't say. Well, a we, word. Do, we don't know. We, do, we don't know what that's going to edit up like. We don't know. They've just taken yeah. that as uh, you know the dram dramatic the, bits. I'm totally torn by this, as I think much of the country is. On the one hand, I, I know firsthand that having a few quid in the bank does not protect you from mental health. And it is quite clear that his mental health, the well-being of his family's mental health, is at the front of his mind. Mm -hmm. And then I have to say, uh, I almost hate myself for saying it, that when you hear, you know, it was survivability, you know, it was just about survivable, but we factor in moving into an $11 million home, signing multi-million pound contracts with, with various sort of media agencies. And it does, for a lot of people, they're going to sit there and think, oh, I mean, you can't... But the money, but the money, thing, the money thing is just dressing and distraction, isn't it? I mean, take, take that away, and their story is just about two people doing something that's at the, with their own best interests at heart, isn't it? Hopefully. Surely. I, I just worry, because of the, the, the way it's being trailed, as, you know, the royal family need to hide behind the sofa, how do we reconcile that warning with Harry and Meghan, hashtag, be kind? Uh, they may very well have, you know, bones to pick with the royal family, but you can't plead mental health be kind and then drop a whole lot of bombs on people. To be fair, we don't know what they're we saying don't. about the royal family don't. there. You're just making that assumption. assumption. So, but also, let's, I... let's put the mental health issue, which is, you know, probably the most principal issue, yeah. let, let's park that momentarily. And, and Julia, there's been a lot... They've talked a lot about their privacy. When you do something like this, and Harry was on the top of the open, tech, uh, open top bus with James Corden, um, Surely now you have no argument uh, against paparazzi intrusion, press intrusion, because you've put yourself out there. Well, indeed, I have to say, yeah, talking about something being unbearable and almost unsurvivable, as, as Matthew pointed out, is, is a bit... I mean, I'm sorry, it's a bit of an insult to millions upon millions of people right now who are absolutely struggling with lockdown and their lives being devastated, losing their homes, losing their jobs, their children not being educated, people not getting treated for cancer, people losing loved ones to COVID. To have a, a very wealthy, very, you know, healthy young, attractive couple with everything going for them, complaining about their lives. I mean, frankly, I don't think it's going to go down very well. But this is the key. They said, and, and if they had stuck to this, if they said, look, we don't want this public life. And, and Harry said, look, I, you know, I don't like what happened to my mother. Um, I, I, want, I want to have a private life with my family. I would be applauding him and saying, good for you. You were born into this world. You didn't choose it. Go and have a wonderful, happy life and, and enjoy being married and having kids and all of that and do a bit of you know, Victor's Games or whatever you, you, you fancy. Good for you. The fact that he has said he wants to walk away from royal service, wants to have best of both worlds, be a celebrity, earn his money, sell his soul to Netflix, to Oprah, to James Corden. They're being paid for these interviews. They're not doing them for free. Um, to have all the publicity that they want, but they don't want the publicity they don't want. Again, they can't they can't pick and choose like We've that. Got another not... another clip um, here. Um, uh, so, uh, so let's have a look at this one. They are allowed to talk about their own yeah. lives in a way that they want to, though, yeah. surely. So without, with, without doubt. And I, I slightly disagree with you. It's slightly more nuanced, isn't it, that when they're full-time working royals, they don't really control their press. They have people speaking on their behalf. You have different factions within the royal household that can spin and spin against them, as happened to Diana, Harry's mum. And so... I think what they, what, they, what they mean about their privacy is that they want to control what they say and to whom, rather than having other people speaking on their behalf. I, I mean, you can't complain about uh, paparazzi and whatnot if you do put yourself in mm. the public eye like that. But if you can control who you speak to and what is said, I think they would consider that a, a, a big step forward. Let's, uh, let's move on to another point here, um, because there's the, uh, this new... Well, it's not new because it started in uh, in Brazil some time ago, but new here, uh, the Brazil COVID-19 variant found in the UK, trying to trace one person in England who's been infected with the... We think it's in England, with the Brazilian variant of coronavirus, um, who uh, who actually didn't fill out the form properly. Um, Julia, how, how, how could that happen? I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary, this, isn't it? We know that viruses mutate. We know that there's... This Brazilian variant being around. This is this is the one we hadn't had in the country on undetected so far. Six people, three in Scotland, three in England. One of them apparently got a test 
Um, they don't know who it was, haven't got a name, haven't got a number, don't even know where the test was carried out, which I think is extraordinary. There's no point testing people unless you can give them their results well, and then you can actually get them to quarantine and self-isolate. So and this is an abject failure by test and trace uh, on, on a huge, huge scale. Realistically, though, you know, do we need to be worried about this new variant? Often this there's a lot of scaremongering about how more dangerous these, these new variants are. As a large, as a general rule, mutations of a virus tend to get less dangerous rather than more dangerous. But this is still an abject failure by test and trace. Uh, and Public Health England is asking for anyone who took a coronavirus test on the 12th or 13th and didn't receive a result or complete a test registration card to come forward immediately. There's also a Swiss Air flight, I think it's uh, LX318, which came in to the UK, I think, on the 10th of February. They're looking at 12th and 13th of February as the primary dates. Um, but whoever this person is, I suspect they know who they are and uh, we can only beg them to come forward because without, if we, if we lose sight of just one variant like this, it does pose potential problems mm. just as everything is going in the right direction. And yeah. that right direction continues um, with this, frankly, miraculous vaccine rollout um, and, uh, and what an organisation that's been uh, to watch that. Look at the chaos in Europe and, and how we've galvanised this. A single dose of either the Oxford or Pfizer vaccine reduces the risk of hospital admission by more than 90%. There are still people in Europe that won't take the Oxford mm -hmm. vaccine because of Angela Merkel and um, President Macron. To be fair, uh, the there's still some people in this it. country who won't take it either. Well, some people that don't want it at all, but that's a, di that's a different issue. But um, sort of 20, 20 million people already. It's, it looks like then it goes up by, it seems to be a million a day. And hospital rates are tumbling, death rates are tumbling. Uh, I know Julia's mustard keen to get out of this, as all of us are. I, I, have, a, I have a personal belief that, that Boris, this time he's playing it safe. I think he, he, he got it wrong last year. We came back too early too many times. This time he wants to be super safe, but I'm starting to think end of June for sort of normal life seems a long way away. The way things are tumbling at the moment, I think we could potentially see no deaths and no hospital transmissions before, uh, admissions before that, maybe end of April, beginning of May. Well, it Final couldn't word, come quick enough, could it? When, when that because if you test millions of people constantly as our families do with children you're always going to get uh, some people testing positive whether those are true positives or not but that's not the issue i think the prime minister came out of us out of the first lockdown too slowly certainly going out of this too slowly we're told it's data not dates the data is all in the right direction we should absolutely be coming out of this if you want to be cautious you need to be cautious about the damage that lockdown is doing to to jobs uh, to health to education to everything else and, and to our society all this pointing and switching of curtains and, and, and sort of making people sneak around if they want to see their loved ones. I'm not endorsing anyone breaking the law, but we know people are. We saw people out in the parks over the weekend. Um, I, I just think we need to get back to the old normal as soon as the data allows and looks like me, the data already allows it. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thanks.